the largest syndicated farm news program on radio in the United States, today originates not from Chicago or New York, but from a small studio at the National Farmers Organization home office in Corning, Iowa. The NFO's Here's Info radio program is aired by over 1,200 radio stations coast to coast. Approximately 90% are programmed as a public service, and the rest are sponsored by members or local Main Street businessmen who cannot join NFO but want to help tell the agricultural story. Here's a sample of one of the radio programs about cattle prices and hamburger prices with NFO news analyst Phil Allen. Supposing today we run a little test. This is a survey for only those listeners who are not farmers. You farmers and ranchers can keep listening, but only the non-farmers take the test. Question number one. What's the price of cattle today? <laughs> number two, what was the price of cattle quoted this day last week? Why should a non-farmer know about the price of cattle? Because non-farmers eat hamburger and T-bone steaks and beef roasts. Let me give you an example of why your ignorance about the price of cattle creates the economic climate which lets the wholesale and retail prices of hamburger climb sky high and stay there even though cattle prices slip downward during that same week. Between May 31st and June 5th, the live cattle price slipped about $5 a hundredweight from a top of $63 on Wednesday, May 31st, down to a $58 top on Monday, June 5th. I talked to two chain grocery stores about hamburger and other beef prices during that same week. At Hinky Dinky store in Omaha, at their meat counter, this is a busy crosstown store. They told me hamburger had been climbing steadily for four or five weeks during April and May, from about 89 cents a pound to $1.19 a pound. And then the price rose on May 31st to $1.25 a pound. I asked why it had gone up steadily. The man told me it was because cattle prices were really high, around $60. When I asked the meat counter man if he knew the price of cattle had jolted downward, about $5 a hundredweight during the first week in June, he said that he sort of remembered that the cattle price had gone down a little. I asked him if the price of hamburger had gone down in the store that same week. He replied that no, it hadn't. It had stayed up to $1.25. To my question why the retail price had not followed cattle prices downward, he explained that they usually wait a few days to see if the lower price for cattle stabilizes. And then, of course, I asked him, why don't they wait until a higher cattle price stabilizes before they raise the retail price of hamburger? And he conceded they are quicker to follow the cattle prices up than they are to follow them down. I then talked to a Safeway store official. He said the Safeway prices on meat are substantially the same as at Hinky Dinky stores. And then he urged me to consider that their pricing, usually changed on Wednesdays if there are to be changes, are not based on the livestock market for that day. And there is a lag of as much as two weeks, he said. He also claimed that Safeway is reluctant to follow a cattle price upward for fear of touching off buyer resistance to one kind of meat to the advantage of some competing kind. But he did concede that there should be some relationship between live cattle and beef prices. And he finally said, maybe within two weeks. And then I made a point with him that I think is more important to make with this audience. The more you consumers know about cattle prices, the more your grocery store meat counter will find it difficult to keep beef prices up in the face of a downward trend in cattle, such as occurred the first week in June. Your ignorance about that slump in cattle was his best ally. One more point. That slump occurred during the same five days the news was full of talk about the government and how it ought to bring in more foreign beef to break our prices downward so that retailers could charge the consumer less. Nothing was done during that week by the government, but just the psychology of it, talking about whether to let in foreign cattle was sufficient to break our cattle prices downward, costing cattlemen millions of dollars. But the meat counter price stayed up, and most non-farmer consumers saw nothing odd about it. 
Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about. This special news service presents agriculture in its truest form for the interest of both rural and urban audiences. It covers consumer and housewife information, agricultural collective bargaining, Washington agricultural scene, the family farm system, economics, and NFO comments and statements. The following is highlights from a three-part series on foreign investment in American farm land. Ben Stong is here today, and we're going to continue a discussion of what the government can do to find out about foreigners investing in American farmland and other businesses. Uh, ben noted that the GAO, a wing of Congress, the Senate Agriculture Committee, and the USDA have undertaken some studies of this big question. He also noted that we need a policy on foreign ownership of banks, defense technology enterprises, and especially we need a policy on the question of blind trusts, which legalize the confidentiality of the real owners in such trusts. What is a blind trust or such a trust as that, Ben? The usual use of the term blind trust is in relation to a trust to which public officials put their property uh, with no reporting to them during their public service. But there are also trusts authorized by, by law uh, which can hold title to properties and protect the confidentiality or conceal the names of the true owners. In the state of Illinois, you have such blind trusts uh, which buy properties and hold them and, and uh, conceal the identity of the true owners of the property. And I understand there are such laws in several states. What can the government do about a situation like that? Well, the only recourse I know would be for a, a congressional committee to hold an investigation of it and subpoena these people and insist that they disclose or divulge who the true owners are. Undoubtedly, if that was attempted, we'd have a lot of court suits and it might, like the Nixon tapes, the confidentiality of the Nixon tapes, go clear to the Supreme Court of the United States, which would take years. It's going to be awfully hard to get at any really comprehensive hard facts about the extent of foreign ownership of farmland or anything else in the United States if the owners want to conceal their identity. We're dealing now with bits and pieces. Can you give us an example of a concealed owner buying in? There was a large 17,000-acre ranch in Montana changed hands recently, and nobody can find out the real owner. They believe it's a Benzoilan oil millionaire, but nobody can be sure because the agent in whose name the ranch is being held is, is a Panamanian. He's a foreigner outside the jurisdiction of the United States. And I don't know how we would force him to divulge the name of the true owner. Are there any other examples, Ben, of uh, foreign ownership? Yes. When you go beyond land, you've got, well, you've got policy question of what we ought to do about foreign ownership of all kinds of businesses. But related to farmland is the question of, of how much foreign ownership do we permit of agribusiness institutions. It was recently announced that the multimillionaire Ferruzzi family of Italy have bought two grain elevators and leased a third one in Illinois. Uh, the Peruzzi's, uh, several years ago, bought a large tract of land on the North Carolina eastern shore, drained it, now have it in agricultural production, and they have their American headquarters on a large plantation in Louisiana. They own a barge line on the Mississippi. And they're now getting into elevators and, and very much into American agribusiness. A Japanese trading corporation is known to be buying six Gulf and inland elevators that used to belong to the Cook Grain Company. And we're going to have a Japanese uh, grain company operating in the United States very soon. The General Accounting Office of Congress, known as the GAO, has released a report on foreign investment and ownership in farm and ranch land. The report follows a six-month study. 
Senator Herman Talmadge, chairman of the Senate Ag Committee, released the report with the statement that there is intense interest in the subject, and as some of the news accounts put it, a great deal of emotionalism. This so-called emotionalism is because everyone who lives and farms the land really cares about America's priceless land system, and they know it would pass into history if large investors from any country took it over. There are several things to note about the GAO report. As Senator Talmadge and other lawmakers fully admit, this GAO gets its data from the existing procedures, mostly at the state level. And uh, they are about who buys and who owns real estate. And such data are unreliable. In fact, the news account in the Des Moines Register, signed by George Anthon, noted that of all the states, Iowa has about the best reporting requirements. And even in Iowa, the true identity of corporate owners can be concealed through trusts, corporations, and companies located in Caribbean tax havens. The GAO study shows that there is a wide range of restrictions on both corporate and foreign involvement in U.S. farmland. But agency officials won't say whether these restrictions written into the law in the various states are effective. For example, Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin place such restrictions on companies in which from 20 to 50 percent of the stock is owned by non-resident aliens. Nebraska doesn't allow foreign controlled corporations to buy land unless the land is within three miles of a city. Senator Talmadge said that he will ask the Senate Appropriations Committee for $450,000 so that the USDA can study the feasibility of a nationwide monitoring system. When we knew the GAO report was to be released soon, we had a chance to visit with Ben Stong, Washington reporter. And here are Ben's observations and some thoughts about what can be done in keeping the spotlight on this subject. We do have extensive uh, foreign ownership of, of American establishments. The European study said that if uh, uh, $800 million had been invested in American farmland, that would be 30% of foreign investments in the United States this year, which means that two or three billion dollars of American establishments went into foreign ownership in the past year. Now this radio program, the one you did uh, last time and this time, and some others that we've attempted on this same subject, reporting what the journalists are saying, do these do any good? Yes, uh, they they uh, uh, create public interest. Uh, public interest generally results in pressure on the government to find out more and to, to deal with the problem. And as long as there is public pressure on Congress and on public officials, you can be sure that public officials are going to be doing something about it. I believe you when you say that. Well, is this program serious? You've described some things that are alarming to some people. Do you think it's serious if foreigners become more and more the owners of American farmland? Yes, unless we become fat and prosperous and, and uh, relax in front of the radios and TVs again and, and fail to keep up the pressure for disclosure and a complete understanding of the hard facts and, and implications of foreign investments in the United States. That was Ben Stong, Washington reporter, commenting on the GAO report and urging that we keep watching and keep the pressure on. Remember, Senator Talmadge says he's asking the Appropriations Committee for $450,000 for a feasibility study. The study deserves your support. Let your congressman know. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about. Here's info is the largest rural areas public relations radio program in the United States and has been built by the membership of NFO. Thank you for all your efforts and keep up the good work. Remember, cooperation is the key.